All right, welcome to The Lowdown, brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sarni, and, and let, let me set the scene here. There is an unbeaten middleweight from Kazakhstan. He seems to hit very hard. No one seems to want to fight him. He was the WBO mandatory challenger at middleweight for Demetrius Andrade. Andrade said nope. He went up to super middleweight. Didn't want to know. It seems no one wants to know. Apart from the man joining me today, British middleweight champion Denzel Bentley. How are you? Good, thanks. And yourself? I'm all right, mate. So you are you are the man that said yes. You are the man that is walking towards the fire. That is Janibek Alim Kanuli. Talk to us about this fight on November 12th. Yeah, no, it's a good fight. I think it'd be an exciting fight. And I think it's a fight that I can win. So <clears throat> why not go out there, you know, enjoy the you know, the theatrics of Las Vegas and come out of a world title. 100%. Tell us how it all came about. Uh, Well, I'm not sure exactly how it, it how it came to me. I was doing an interview with uh, Rich, Richard Hubbard and then he mentioned him to me and was talking about him and then uh, Martin was stood behind the camera and he said, oh, okay, cool. And he left, came home and then I got a phone call from Martin saying, all right, cool. I wasn't going to tell you because you've got a fight coming up. But since I've heard you mentioning them already, this is what's been offered, this guy, blah, blah, blah. I was actually taking a nap. When he said that, I woke up. I was like, what? Huh? What did you say? Who? Yeah? All right, let's go. Let's take it. And then he was like, all right, cool. But focus on the job at hand first. But obviously, I was still fighting. I was like a week out or two weeks out from fighting up too much. So I thought, all right, all right cool. We'll, we'll um, you know, focus on that first and, and then I'll, you know, tell my family and friends the news and, and obviously it's, it's come out now, so yeah. So you knew about this fight before you boxed Marcus Morrison? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, so that, that must have put uh, put uh, an extra sort of bit of pressure on you because, look, that was a, you know, that's a, a tough fight on paper, Marcus Morrison. It's not an easy night for anyone. And then you had the world title shot hanging in the balance beyond that. What, what was your, your feelings heading into that? Yeah, 100%. He's a dangerous fight for anyone, but I just thought, even without that on the line, if I lose to this guy, then it's dead. And my dreams of, you know, what title was dead anyway. Well, at least for the near future, that like it take a long road back again, and I was I wasn't having that. So I think that was more the concern anyway, rather than this is what next. Because at the end of the day, thinking about that fight, it might not have happened. It just got offered to me by the time I'd have fought Marcus Morrison. They might have found someone and been like, no, you know what, we got someone. We're all right. So I wasn't really thinking about that, and especially in between, I saw the offer at the Hamza. I thought, oh. Just because of what I saw him say in the interview with you, I thought he'd probably take that. So then I was like, all right, cool. Let's just get this out of the way. So I wasn't really going in there with that in my mind. I was just going in there with him. Like, I, I want to beat this guy convincing. And I was saying all week as well that I want to be the first middleweight to stop, which I was. So I'm happy with that. So tell us why you've said yes to this uh, Alim Kanuli opportunity. And what, how much of a second thought did you give it was it an instant yes when it was on the table did you were you like go away I'll have to have a little think about this or was it straight away a yes talk to us yeah no it was it was a straight away yes straight away yes 100 percent. and then I went back and thought about it because obviously there's, there's a few um there's things to iron out on my side and stuff and then I thought you know what no I actually do want to do this I do want to fight him it's a great opportunity first of all for a world title which which fight doesn't want to be in this position and I, and like I said to you Back in May or whenever we mm-hmm. had the last chat before the last chat, <laughs> so in May that I think I can I can generally beat him. I think he's beatable. I'm, I'm that everyone says he's scary or whatever, but I I, I don't I, I don't see it. Maybe I'm missing something, but I I just don't see it. I, well, we will find out when when we get when we get in the ring anyway. Well, yeah, I remember we had a chat after your win over Linus Sudofia, and you told me then because I, I said, "Who do you think you'll end up fighting for a world title when that shot happens?" And you said, "I've been thinking about Yannibek, and he was heading into a fight with Danny Dignam that weekend." Yeah, your yeah. thoughts, your thoughts at the time were, "I just think I can beat him." So since that, he's he's knocked out Danny Dignam. Have you? What what are your general thoughts towards Yannibek? I think he's a good fighter. I think he's nice. I think he's slick. I think he's real comfortable in the ring. I think that's one of his best attributes, his, his comfortability in the ring. He's, he's just he's a real confident person. And I think that's one of his best attributes. I haven't seen him, you know, panic under pressure in the ring or, or like, you know what I'm saying, or put a foot wrong, really. So he, he's a good fighter. And this is clearly a fight that you've you've pictured for a long time. It must be... Uh... I mean, it, it must be quite crazy that this is the guy that you, you thought it would be and it's going to be him. Yeah. 
that's why it's mad because like we say we spoke back in May after the Lions fight and I was just thinking I, I have a feeling I'll, I'll come up against especially where I was ranked with WBR I think if I, if I could come in the ranking that's who it's going to be do you know what I mean unless there's a vacant title come up somewhere and we decide to go that way or wherever but that's not the case of course so the, when it came through I was like well, nah, there's no way I can say no right now like I've been talking about him on, on every platform that's like out there you know what I mean every time I'm asked I say the guy's name and now I'm going to say no like, there's not just forget what everyone else thinks, just for myself. I'm like, nah, I, 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 nah, I, I can't see for that. But it's not even like I'm, I'm pressured into this or I'm being forced or I'm scared, but I'm, I'm trying to do it. No, it's the fact that I'm actually happy to take. Why do you think they, um, they offered it to you? Why do you think they came knocking on Denzel Bentley's door? I have no clue, you know. Maybe they, um, have seen me mention him a few times because obviously when I say his name, they're going to put my name and his name there. You search his name and it's like, oh. Who's this guy saying my name? Maybe it was something to do with that. Let's see if he really wants to fight if he's saying my name. And I think I put a tweet out there one day and I tagged him in it saying, I'd love to share the ring with you at some point. Didn't get a reply, but <laughs> he must have just shown it to his team and said, all right, this guy, yeah, yeah. So it might have been that. But that was, I think, around the times of Danny Dignan fight. So it was a while back. But um, yeah, this is where we are now. And you know, I'm happy about it. Do you think... Uh... Do you think they're underestimating you at all? Have you have you heard any sort of comments from that side? Because you are a voluntary defence at this point. You don't normally pick someone you think is going to fill you in, right? No, of course, of course. Um, probably I saw a tweet um, that he put out, which is quite funny. I, I found it quite funny. But other than that, I don't know what they really said. But they probably are just seeing it as a voluntary, a nice, easy defence to defend his world title. And, yeah, man, that's that's his problem, isn't it? Not mine. You like that, though, don't you? I remember the, the Eudofia fight. You were heading into enemy enemy territory. All the chat was about Eudofia getting a stadium fight down the line. And he may have been the favourite in that. If not, he certainly seemed to come across as the favourite. It, it was his show. And I think that really set some... That, that put something in you, a new fire. Am I right? Yeah, no, 100%. It did. You know, going in that away corner, everyone thinking, oh, so you don't all just think this is the guy. All right, cool, I'm coming to... Make your party my party. So I kind of like that kind of feeling. Going into fight, being in that away corner ain't nothing new to me. I'm all right with that. And tell us why this is the right fight at the right time now for Denzel Bentley. You're 27 years old. You're a two-time British middleweight champion. You're in the rankings, and now this is it. Tell us why now's the right time. You know, I'm one of them guys. I just believe, you know, of course, everyone wants to put their destiny into their own hands and push things and stuff. I think everything happens in God's time. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I wasn't screaming and shouting in the office, I want him next, I want him next. Had a few interviews, I mentioned his name, and I said, if it came, I'd fight him. And it's came. It's, it's come, sorry. Like, do you know what I mean? It's here. Like, I'm one of, the, I'm, I'm one of those guys, I believe, look, like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, it will come. I believe everything happens in God's time, and this was the right time. Because, you know, like you said, they could have got any middleweight in the world. And, and I've, I've been picked for this. So I feel like this is my time to actually show what I can do and step up that level that I always talk about and say, you know, that I want to be at. So turning this down not make no sense because I'm I'm that guy, you speak, everyone that speaks to me, I tell them I want to be, you know, a world champion. I want to be at world level. And now I've got a chance to be a world champion. I'm going to turn it down because I don't think I'm ready. I've been a pro five years. I've had 19 fights. I've got to be ready. Do you know what I mean? What do I need? Another five years and another 19 fights. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I think, you know, this is the time to go in there and this is the time to do it. And I think I can do it. And this is another example, Denzel, of you just not taking an easy road. Mark Heffron, you know, Felix Cash, yeah. Linus Eudofia away. Marcus Morrison being the first man to stop him as a middleweight when Chris Eubank Jr. couldn't do it. You're taking difficult road and you're taking, uh, you're walking towards someone that other people are walking away from. It's just me, isn't it? I don't know, man. I like the danger. <laughs> it makes it more exciting for me. Like I've been saying early in my career as well, I just hate, Training so hard for fights that you just know you're going to win. Like, mentally, it's like, you know what I mean? I, I like that little edge. Like, okay, cool. You think it's going to happen? I'm putting an extra work there. Like, when it, when it got leaked, I saw, you know, all the, like, the feedback from people. And I was meant to be off because I just thought, you know, I'd take a couple of days off. I meant to be off for a couple, a couple of days. And then I, and I was reading the comments as it got leaked. I was just going through Twitter, going through all these little boxing, social media posts, that thing. You know me already, I like the comments. 
I went through the comments and I see all the all the people saying, "Wow, this guy's mad. He's about to get iced or he's da 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 da." Like, slow down. You just need more. I said, "Yeah." I woke up next morning and went to the gym. I said, "Yeah." Martin's going, well, you've been there so early. I said, yeah, I just felt like coming in. But really and truly, it, it got me motivated. I said, is that what everyone thinks? All right, let's go then. And I just had to go back to the gym. So, you know, started camp early. And, well, I, I say early, you know, there's not really long to go. But I've just come off a fight. It wasn't uh, a hard fight. I didn't really have much, much, take much of a toll on my body and stuff. So I'm ready to just get my kinder and go again. It's fuel for you, isn't it? It is big fuel. I know you, that that's how you uh, that's how you find extra motivation. We've talked about it before how, about how you know after the loss to Felix Cash, you went through all the comments and it's like okay, all right, and it built up something in you which, which you're now channeling yeah. into the ring. So this is um, you're going through comments and there's going to be plenty when this fight is formally announced of people saying what's he doing, etc. All the stuff that you've said and it's motivation for you. Hundred percent. I don't get worried about people saying. <laughs> that it's obvious it's the internet do you know what I mean but I just see it as, oh is that what you think okay I just want to prove everyone wrong I just want to prove you wrong now like what, like, what are you going to say after like you know what I mean like come at this fight and, and, and win and bring back the world title everyone's going to say oh we need more fighters like them do you know what I mean okay. taking challenges and blah 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 of course if they don't go my way everyone's going to say oh look you idiot but it's, that's the risk I'm willing to take you know what I'm saying there's, 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 there's no reward if there's no risk what can you do that Danny Dignam couldn't I can't speak for Danny Dignam. That's a totally different fight off to me, different style, um, you know, different characters. You know what I'm saying? I, I think he went in there with just a lack of confidence and that's probably what, you know, um, made him lose like that. But he, other than that, he's a good fighter. But, you know, we probably didn't have them tough in-between fights going into that big fight, which which I've had, which probably what, what contributes to my confidence. You know what I'm saying? So other than that, I, I can't speak for his style. He's, he's a completely different fighter and, you know, I just I like to see him come back and do something, do something good. Tell us how you see this fight playing out then, November twelfth in Las Vegas. See my hand being raised, man. See my hand being raised. Hi, and the new. <laughs> Let's do it. When when are you heading out there? Um, still waiting for some things to um, you know, to um, get confirmed and stuff. But we're trying to do at least ten days to two weeks out there. You know, try and try just get real comfortable settling, and then you know. But we're still waiting for some paperwork to go through and things to come back and stuff. So yeah, not really sure yet. Denzel Bentley hits Las Vegas. Eh? Have you have you been before? No, I never. I've been to America, but I've never been to Vegas. Mate, you're about to light up the strip here, mate. It could be the first of many. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, man. Tell us um, your message if you have one to Yanni Beck if he's watching. Uh, I ain't got no message to him. Um, and if I said it, I would need to say it in in his his native language. <laughs> but yeah, don't know, he's I good on Twitter. He's very good on the old Twitter. Yeah. He's sending out all sorts of English language messages. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. See, he, he probably don't even know it's being sent out from yeah. someone else. But um, yeah, no, nah, just let's get it on, man. Let's put on a show, man, and you know, let's do it, man. Denzel. Brilliant speaking to you. I'm um I'm so happy you're taking this fight. I'm so happy you're you're getting the opportunity to do this now and uh and you're back in it. You spoke his name five months ago, he's come calling and you're back in it. So yeah, full credit to you. Hundred percent. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right. Make sure everyone tunes in as well, man. Yeah. I know it's gonna be that like after hours, but stay up, man. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs>